guys. Welcome to the Girl Techno Podcast. I am your host, Shawnee Sanders, and we have a really good show for you guys today. We have special guest Kate Glendon with us. And for those of you who don't know, Kate is a life coach. She focused on mindset and wellness, which I'm so super excited to talk about. She's been doing it since 2022. She has a background in um, public health, a master's degree in public health. She's also coupled that with 15 years experience of focusing on total wellness. And she helped women identify those things that are causing you distress, frustration, or just maybe those blockers that that you can't get over that hump. So guys, welcome to the show, Kate. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Of course. I'm so happy to be here. Yeah, it's, it's going to be a good show. I, I'm super excited about this because me and my girlfriends have been talking about mindset for like... I don't know how long now, especially when it comes to our weight loss journey. But overall, when it comes to just achieving something in your life, we understand that your mindset is everything. And so I'm super excited to have you on this show. I think you're going to be very beneficial to our listeners because I know a lot of people struggle with just focusing, being able to focus on the thing, goals they want to achieve when it comes to weight, or just personal things in their life or career things as well, because I believe mindset has to do with all of that. You know what I mean? But before we get in, into any of those, I, I have questions. I want to first start with, let's get the story behind, coming from your public health background, let's get the story behind what made you decide to transition over into life coaching. So I think it was my experience with um, trying every diet in the, <laughs> in the world. So I totally get it. And it yeah. is a mindset thing. Um, being completely burnt out and stressed from work mm -hmm. um, and just not feeling good in my body no matter what size I was or no matter what I wore or how I was done up. So I was like, and not maybe also being around this the type of people that were empowering. Yeah. So they weren't clapping for me. Um, yeah. They were doing the opposite. <laughs> so I was like, um, something has to change here. And so at first it starts with me, right? Mm -hmm. So I have to yep. internal and kind of like do some deep work. Like what were my triggers and, and sticking points? Mm -hmm. Um, and I was like, you know, I, ha I have something special here. I'm already doing some, some work with people voluntarily for free, um, to help them get back on their, um, feel better to me path. And I was mm -hmm. like, so, you know, I'm going to get trained, um, as a life coach. And then, take it a step further and get trained as a mindset coach because mm -hmm. it really all does come back to the mind. Yep. And so I started my business because I have a passion for helping women um, just get that confidence back yeah. to get back to that, you know, harmony of living and having a balanced and healthy life because I had lived so long without one and mm -hmm. it really takes a toll on you. Yeah, it, it really do. Um, you know, especially when it comes to weight loss over a certain age, like I'm over 40. And it's like when you hit a certain age, it is so difficult to one wrap your mindset around the fact that, okay, I'm no longer in my 20s. My body is different. I, I can't burn, you know, fat as like I used to. I can't work out. My knees are bothering. My back is hurting. So it's like you, <laughs> you, I, you, you recognize that, okay, I'm not like I used to be. And so my mindset changes and it gets in a place where it's like, man, how am I even going to do this at this age now with my, like I said, your busy life work, being a wife, being a mom, it's like, it can really take the back end. But yet you look at yourself in the mirror and you say, I don't even recognize this person in the mirror. You know what I mean? I like looked at myself and I'm like, Kate, you are, you're gray. Like you're yeah. just like, you know, you're not there. You need to do something. And yeah. I think, you know, as we age, it does unfortunately get a lot harder. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. And, you know, you can't get away with like those weekend binges of food and alcohol and just yeah. whatever you choose to do to or not taking care of your health. Um, and it is hard, but I mean, age is just a number, right? So you yeah, want yeah. to be able to be like, okay, that's great. I'm at, you know, what can I do now so that I feel 20? Yeah. And so, you know, it's so <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So, you know, you got to take that out as for what it is and just yeah. be like, okay, this is what I'm going to start here, but it's a small goal and simple change yeah. so that you're not just going to go run a half marathon and eat all like... <laughs> juices and vegetables in the world no you're just going to evaluate see what you think is working and what's not 
Yeah. And I think like have some self-compassion for yourself, right? Because you've got this far yeah. in your life. Focus on those accomplishments and like yeah. what's not working. Like yeah. what are your pinpoints? Yeah. What what do you think when it comes to mindset? Um what do you think is like the biggest blocker for most people in your business that want to achieve something, uh, want to achieve weight loss goal, want to achieve maybe career success? Like I said, because I believe mindset goes with all of that and how we think about ourselves and what we believe. And then it comes into like manifestation. So do manifestation play a part in retraining your mindset into believing like, hey, I am I am healthy because, you know, you get to a certain age. It's not about being skinny. It's about being healthy. You know what I mean? And being fit and feeling strong. I had a trainer once tell me when I was training with her, she was in her late fifties and she was very fit and strong. And she was like, you know, as you get older, it's not about being skinny. It's about being strong, being able to continue to walk up those stairs and being able to continue to do carry things and not like your bones just shriven up. And now you can't do the things you used to do. So what do you think is like some of the blockers when it comes to trying to shift that mindset and try to get people to think more positively? Cause I know it's, it's hard. It's hard for me to do it. Right. And like, it's so hard. And let's just yeah. be honest. We're not going to be positive a hundred percent of the time. Okay. Yeah. It's yeah. okay. Um, <laughs> because that's just not, that's just that's not possible sometimes, you know, yeah. we're going to have periods of, of upset and that's what pushes us further um, and grows us. But mm -hmm. you know, the old saying says like karma will always catch up with you. So if you're putting good things in the universe, it's going to come back to you. Yeah. And if you're doing mantras or like positive affirmations, they have to be ones that are personalized for you. Mm. So ones that, you know, fit for you, like maybe you're not a morning person. So you just say, I wake up early. I wake up when my alarm goes off, you know, just simple things like that. But mm -hmm. for mindset, a lot of it is like what we, um, like our thoughts become our feelings and our feelings becomes our results. So mm -hmm. if your thing, your feelings and results may not be the best ones, maybe they're negative. Maybe that self chatter in your head is not serving you. You wouldn't talk to yeah. a friend like that, but you know, for some reason we all think it's okay to talk to ourselves really horribly. Yeah. So that produces results that do not aid in our behavior of feeling good about ourselves. So that's kind of where we start. Like, so why do you have this thought or mm -hmm. limitation in your life? Is it something that you learned as a child? Is it something that, you know, was brought on by a comment or you read, you know, what is holding you back and how can we change that um, thought to become a more positive feeling so that your actions are working towards your goals and yeah. just focusing on that 1% change, which leads to another change, you know? Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Um, also, you know, when I think about it, it's that like, what is it, how important that is, is routine or being habitual when it comes to mindset changes. Is it important to have a routine to say, Hey, because I know I started doing this thing where I'm like, okay, I'm trying to change my mindset. I need to get focused. I think I need to have a routine. I need to be able to schedule my workouts and I need to be able to schedule or even just, you know, even meal prepping is just so hard for me to do sometimes, but just trying to figure out what I'm going to have. So I'm like, do I need to be more regimented? Do I need to have a routine and try to stick to that routine in order for me to achieve this goal I'm trying to achieve or either just help me change my mindset? Like, what are your thoughts on that? That's a great question, right? So um, I like to call it like calendar integrity. Like, how do you mm. want to show up every day? And so if you hate meal prepping, like, why do you hate it? Because <laughs> yes. it takes forever, right? Yeah, it takes time. So, I mean, this is a common, like, this is the third time this has come up for me this week. And I'm like, <laughs> everyone, they pre-cut vegetables in the grocery store now. <laughs> Just yeah. buy pre-cut. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> you know, buy the frozen ones, right? So you yeah. have to find a way that that works for you. And if meal prepping is just isn't something that you want to take on, it's okay. <laughs> you could still, you know, prep before each like every day. You yeah. Eat. Yeah. Like, you know, let's not like try on a new body or person that doesn't doesn't feel right to you. Yeah. But you need to take some kind of action every day. So scheduling your workouts, I think are really important and mm -hmm. especially getting them done when you, you know, if you're a morning person, I like to do that because get yeah, it done. Too. Yeah. And then you have like almost like the hardest thing accomplished done. You've done one thing for yourself. And then if it is eating healthy, like just looking at your Sunday or whatever day you look 
maybe you don't look in the morning like yeah. what do you need to get through the day what foods do you need and like what is your personal development for that day do you have a mantra you're going to repeat a couple times are you going to be writing three things you're grateful for and this just come and creates that ab- abundance mindset mm-hmm. and then it keeps you accountable like um in my when you s- subscribe to my email list you get like a weekly free freebie and a couple of emails about wellness and we talk about that and we give you a calendar mm. so that you can write oh, down that's good. Like, your daily plans um and weekly goals and that way you know you're always leaving a block because life happens things mm-hmm. get pushed off um or come unexpected that you have a time on Fridays to do so yeah um, so it's hard especially if you have children or you're yeah. taking care and you yeah. work multiple jobs. Like it's oh. hard to balance things. And sometimes <laughs> yeah. people have jobs where like it's they don't have lunch breaks. They they work, 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 and then yep. they're done. And yeah. so it's like how do we accommodate your schedule to meet your goals? Yeah. And I think that's important too for a lot of people is that how do I work this into my lifestyle? You know, because when I think about you know, weight loss and wellness and cause even self care, I think is a part of wellness, you know? And Absolutely. I feel like, and I feel like I just don't do enough of that. And I know a lot of people that just don't do enough of that. Cause like you said, when you're busy working, you're, you're a mom and you got kids and you got to cook, you got to clean house. You got to do, I feel like I'm consistently doing laundry, but that's just another story. Um, and it's like, how do you, how do you fit everything in? How do I schedule that? How do I, I plan that without it feeling like it's a chore for me, you know? But I guess, like you said, it just goes back to my mindset because my mind is telling me, oh, this is just a chore, you know? Right. <laughs> And, it, you know, it's going to be there tomorrow. And if you don't do it, it's going to get worse. And it's just yes. like, okay, you know, what if it's just like, okay, cool. I, you know, have this great experience of now mm-hmm. wearing this new shirt again. <laughs> Yes. You know, um, and you know, it's something to do. Um, sometimes people think like folding clothes is very stress relieving. So if Mm -hmm. you could just like put on some music and just like make it your thing, your time away from everyone to do it, um, Mm -hmm. is another way of thinking about it. Yeah. Yeah. It's that's just true. like our thoughts of where, you know, you know, those times where it's like, oh, I really don't want to go to this birthday party. And oh, yeah. You go with that feeling. And the birthday party is not fun because you've already put in your mind that you were not going to have fun. Mm-hmm. So, you know, just, you know, don't put any thoughts or, or, you know, keep laundry neutral. It's always going to be there. It's there. You need it so you don't smell. And yeah. You're do it. <laughs> exactly. So being intentional, which is why I, put this as a part of the title being intentional about your steps in your day is a very important part of mindset change then absolutely you have to Mm -hmm. be intentional because to to change your mind it's not like an overnight one breakthrough it Mm -hmm. is ups and downs it's it's hard there's emotions with it but the thing is keep doing it and eventually you'll be like wow if you react differently to one situation or you are you know successfully like preparing for a week or a day like that's huge and you have to celebrate that like you know Mm -hmm. you know the day that you go out with friends and you choose the salad or you don't choose the alcohol or yeah you choose to go to the family party and you bring something that is healthy for you to eat yeah. Um, is also important. And, you know, there's going to be people, especially in families that may not have the best mindset mm-hmm. and we have to accept that that's who they are. And it's like, what are we going to show up when they say those things to us and how are we going to react? Yeah. And at some place, something like, oh, can I get you a drink and, and be moving on, but so that you're not engaging with it. It's not, you know, yeah. it's not going to mess with your energy. You're protecting yourself. Yeah, because, you know, weight loss and healthy overall is an emotional state and people can trigger, words can trigger you because I know a lot of us, we, I could do, like for me, for example, I could do really good with eating during the week, but when it comes to the weekends, like you said before, I just, I don't know what it is about the weekends. I just feel like, oh, I can have this bag of chips, like the whole bag. It'll be okay. You know, I worked out all week, so why not take this? bag of chips and so me and my friends we call it trying to win our weekends right <laughs> we're just like we have to win our weekends because it is a struggle on the weekends and I don't know I, I don't know if you know like what is it about the weekend 
that makes most people just kind of like want to binge eat or just do whatever and just throw the plan out the window. Yes, it's freedom. freedom. Like you're like, woo, I made it through the week because we all like look forward to Friday. Yeah, yes. And we're like, Mm -hmm. we're going to do whatever we can. And usually that's through food, right? Yeah. Because although food is fuel and it's self-care. Yes. It's very hard um, because food is culture. Food is tradition. Food Mm -hmm. is friends and family. So being with a set of people like your girlfriends and doing walks and coffee instead of brunch and mimosas. Yes. But it's very different. Yeah. Um, you're you're happy doing it, but it's a very weird change. And, um, you know, it's, it's being able to have that become part of a normal lifestyle and also to remember that, you know, Mondays don't have to be scary or suck. It, it's just a Monday that's going to get you to pay your bills and, and you're going to find something valuable about the week that's going to help you. Yeah. I mean, so many of us are tired and stressed or don't like our job and, and mm-hmm. afraid of, you know, to get the Sunday scary. Well, why? Like, why does it have to be that way? Yeah. You know, yeah. I, you know, I'm used to crying on, on Sundays, but then I was like, no, because like I'm adding value mm-hmm. to my life and to my job and let's see what this week has to bring me. Yeah. And it's so funny you mentioned um, traditions because it's, I just had this conversation not too long ago where I had this epiphany where I feel like when I was thinking about my relationship with food and I think about when I celebrate, I we eat. When we're sad, when we go to funerals, we eat. And it's like food is a part of every emotion. You know, when we're angry, we eat sometimes. You know, it's it's such an emotional journey with food. And it's like, how do, how do I? Because it's been such generational for me. Like I've been raised to know that this is your relationship with food. When we're happy, we have something to eat. When we gather with friends, we have something to eat. When we have parties, we have something to eat. It's so hard to break those generational habits when you're so used to associating food with almost everything like we get happy me and my girlfriend we get so happy when we talk about food it's like oh my god Leah, let's get together let's have some some wine oh what are we gonna eat you know we get like super happy is it the fermos i don't know what it is but food really it gets you going and it's like i i have to change my mindset and my relationship with food and i have to be happy about the foods that are not like chips and I don't know, French fries and try to do and substitute. I'm just rambling here. I'm sorry, because I'm just like, I'm just you going. Know, you, know you, know you know what I'm hearing is like, yes, food is, a, is from, you know, from back in the day to now was mm-hmm. a place that people gathered and it yeah. still is and it still should be right. Because yeah. you just do it in a way where, you know, you're cooking things that are healthier. Yeah. So maybe yep. you're hosting it or you're going to try different like healthy places or, you know, and it still can be that way. You know, mm-hmm. you can still get excited and do the foodie and do the self, you know, grams about the food, but you're just looking at it as a different way. Like you need this food to feel better and you're all doing it together rather than the every week in indulgences and just try to, you know, make that more of a specialty thing than an every weekend thing. Yeah. Because yeah. in life, it's all about balance and, and moderation. And so you yeah. can still have those things just like not every day or every weekend uh, because then all the hard work that you do during the, the week, it just goes away. And so the, then we go into why, you know, why is it on this these two days that you forgot? Like, you yes. know, you know, yeah. So, you know, remembering your goal and intention and, and, you know, trying to do that on the weekend is important too. So like every morning doing a little bit of mindset on what do you want your day to look like? Like, how do you want to feel at the end of the day mm-hmm. you know, and what's going on? Because there's always an event. There's always a holiday. There's always, always something to, to do. And you know what? Food's going to be there because we need yeah. food to stay alive. Yeah. And so it's just that, you know, we kind of change how we view it. Like I always say like, mm, is that worth, like, is that worth the calories at the party? Like I could buy my own chips. I don't need to eat theirs. Like, yeah. you know, especially, you know, is that like a specialty cake that someone made that maybe is worth having a slice of it? And always remembering the first taste you know, is the best yeah. taste. Yeah. I don't really remember the last. Yeah. 
So let me ask you this. What do you recommend to a working mom who, um, you know, when you have a family, you have to cook, right? And they're not necessarily going to eat what you eat. But do you think it's best to say, hey, you know, because sometimes it's difficult to cook for the family. Then you got to cook something separate for you, right? Because you don't want to eat what they eat. Do you think it's best to say, hey, let's try to get the whole family on a much more healthier lifestyle and try to redirect them from all the bad things that we have been eating, you know what I mean? To just put them in a different position. Is it easier, you think, to recommend that to the working mom? For the working mom, like if you're wanting to switch over the family's eating, it's, you know, it's a great experience to do it all together Mm -hmm. where you're teaching children, like what foods make you strong. And Mm -hmm. so involving them in the process of, hey, you know, these are the items that we have, like, try to make a meal out of them, you know? Yeah. So they're involved with it. You know, it's hard when you have picky eaters because if you do, you're automatically oh meeting an extra yes. meal. Yeah. But, um, and then, you know, sometimes you just have, you know, it may not meet your goals, but you have to be okay with eating food that they're not eating. Mm-hmm. Um, and eventually they'll be, they'll pick up on your habits because they're watching what you're doing. Yeah. Even though they may not say it, they're watching. And so... Mm-hmm always talking about you know oh these are really good for your body rather than this is a bad food and this is a good food and just as you know this is a food we eat like on special occasions or you know something like that because then it helps involve everyone and and then you know take them to the store it's a good way to educate them too Mm -hmm. um, because eventually they have to go make food choices and they'll have that that information because most people don't don't have that don't get that and mm-hmm. you know there's that's one way i would suggest to do it um mm-hmm. but it all depends on what your family likes and sometimes it's hard and yeah. if you have sports your eating schedule could be just oh. like so many things on the run so yeah really like take advantage of the moments when the family can sit down together because those are great ways to have communication, you know, mm-hmm. and research shows the more meals that you can have together with a family, the more dialogue and the more communication and more trust that's built within the family. Yeah. Let me ask you this too. When it comes to, um, cause I've not been there before where you get to a place where you can drop the weight, you feel good about yourself. You're looking your best, but then for some reason, it, you kind of fall off and I, and I don't know what that is. It, and, you know, in your experience in dealing with, um, you know, some of your clients in, have they ever got to a point where they've gotten the weight off, they're feeling good, but then all of a sudden it just kind of like slows down and the weight come back. How do you deal with that? What is that mindset? How do you deal with that? Yeah. So for my clients and for my, myself, when I deal mm-hmm. with that maintenance of a, of a weight or go, going through the diet is, is harder than losing the weight. Yes. Yes. Like you you know, you have this free for all and it's just kind of, you still have to, um, have that balance and moderation, mm-hmm. but realizing what your new goal is. And that is to not just think like, this is a freedom ride. Like if you want to stay here, you have to continue to do the good habits. They're just a little bit easier now to do because you've gotten to that weight loss. Um, mm-hmm. so you know, having an extra day or two out is going to affect you just like it would when you're on a diet. And so sometimes we might be more loosey with our diet or track or, you know, have that extra, you know, celebration food because we can, we lost the weight. And so it's the mindset. Yeah. Like, you know, don't have that mindset of you can't affect me. Like I'm better than that. Like, no, you're still working on your health and you want to feel good. So extra cake and extra fried food is not going to. Yeah. And you know, you get so disappointed. Like, how do you deal with that defeated attitude when you're like, man, I did all this work. I worked to get all this weight off. And now here it is again. And now I got to go through the process again. And then I think the mindset comes in is like, okay, what can I do to lose this weight quickly? What cabbage soup diet? Like, what do you say to that person who's like on that cabbage soup diet? Oh, just one to <laughs> <laughs> oh. Either the person that does like, I see people do liquid diets and I don't know how they're able to do that for long term. Is that, that's what I mean. Like, what do you say to that person who always want to jump on that next fad that's come out to try to do this thing quickly? And I tell people, this is one of my favorite quotes I, I saw. And it's like, you know, um, one of my favorite things is that progress is slow. So you got to be in it for the long haul. 
So what do you tell that person who's like, I'm just trying to get this done quick. I'm trying to get into this outfit. I'm trying to get to Hawaii, you know, just trying to a short term goal versus long term. Yeah, I would just be like, why? Why now? <laughs> you know, um, because any short term goal or starvation type of diet to get you to the, you know, uh, that whatever it, it only like only affects and slow downs your metabolism, mm -hmm. but it puts you in a state of desperation and starvation. And so, you know, you have to take time out of the equation and whether it takes you a year or two years to reach the weight or body confidence that you need, yeah. does it really matter if you reach that goal? You know, as long as you're reaching it, why should it matter how long it takes you? And so sometimes you're going to fail because just like an, you know, EKG machine, you go up and down and smooth line up and down. Um, and I wouldn't call it failure. I would just look at it with compassion and see what the situation that it was. Was it, you know, what caused you to kind of just go on a different road? Mm -hmm. How did yeah. you get lost in the process? And sometimes that happens. You know, we forget our intention that we want or someone yeah. said something to us to trigger us or we went on vacation and, and didn't want to get back on. So asking those questions like, okay, why did I get off course or why do I feel like I need a short term result? What am I, am I feeling embarrassment or shameful? You know, are people going to notice that I gained weight? Like, you know, and I think it's like what we think other people think. Um, yeah. so just yeah. being kind to ourselves and it's like, it's just, you know, it's just the way it is. It, if it came on, it can come off. Like it's not permanent. Um, and life is fluid. So weights mm -hmm. will change. Yeah, it does change. How, how closely are your beliefs associated with your mindset when you're trying to shift your mindset? So close. How, yeah. Yeah. That's what I was thinking too. And because when you think about relationships, you think about what we believe and stuff like that and our mindset. And I just know the mind is such a powerful tool. You know what I mean? It has the ability to make or break us, you know, and body positivity is such a huge thing now that's trending. How do you deal with the client that is maybe doesn't have that body positivity about themselves and struggles with that even through the weight loss? Because some people even lose the weight and still, I guess that's the wrong confidence, still don't have the confidence that they need in order to see that, to see all what they've accomplished. And so that's where what I would, I go to journaling for, you know, mm -hmm. and I tell them to like, let's write down everything that you've accomplished. Let's write down what you're thinking. Yeah. And what are some facts and maybe, and usually some of the thoughts are just what we're thinking and are feeling and are not necessarily true. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of getting them to think cognitively about you know, what is a fact versus a feeling and thought, because mm -hmm. maybe something sat with them or was said to them that they still haven't dealt with and that now we have to deal with that. Yeah. And maybe they didn't have the support and nurturing growing up to mm -hmm. have confidence or they were put down. So that's where we then have to work because if we don't work there, the, the body confidence will never go up. Maybe they had body confidence, they wore something, <laughs> they thought they were looked great in and someone said something to them and that's all that really takes. That's it, so that's all it takes, yeah. Words, you know, they stay with you and now, you know, you don't wanna hide yourself in clothes. I, I've done that for so many <clears throat> years because it's just normal. Like I don't want anyone looking at me because I used to be bigger, you know, I used yeah. to weigh more and it feels uncomfortable. So, you know, it's, it takes time <clears throat> to be, be there. And that's where you need your friend support too. Um, but just because you lose weight or, you know, you have a good mindset doesn't mean you're always going to have the confidence to, to go with the, the size of your weight or size of your clothes. And that's where we look about, well, let's take away the sizes, the weight, the scale, and let's like, just look at the whole health of you. Like how do yeah. you feel as, as what is missing from like your real life? What's not working here. Mm -hmm. And yeah. then it could be a whole nother spectrum of relationships and emotionship emotions that we haven't touched upon. Yeah. How much childhood trauma, um, 
do you think you're are you experiencing your clients that had childhood trauma when it comes to weight loss like you said things that was said to them as a child and that affects their relationship or affects their mindset with trying to achieve um this healthy journey or just achieve anything honestly i think it affects a lot um mm -hmm. i think the way that kids are because they just don't know their brains that fully develop is can be mean and so when keep you yeah. bullied or you know if you just ate less like someone had said to me or worked out you wouldn't be fat well mm. i mean that that hurts because they did work out and i did eat healthy you know yeah. or you know having family parties where you were rewarded with food you had food everything yeah. involved like dessert your you know your culture could be italian and that involves heavy meals mm -hmm. or maybe you didn't have a lot of food as a child and so when you get the food you eat all of it because of this you don't know when you're going to eat again yeah so you know if your family and your a mom or whoever is taking care of you isn't talking about food <clears throat> and is it in a in a positive way it's yeah. gonna affect you like my like my mom was always dieting so if you're you know that was like kind of fell on to me like i was always dieting like yeah it was just normal it's always you know oprah was dieting i mean yeah. everyone was so everybody like, was it was like the know, thing to do like a common thing that mm -hmm. was always like you know dieting or make a comment oh i know i shouldn't eat this or you know so why do we have to call it a diet why do why can't it just be like i'm choosing this today yeah yeah you're right it's it's so crazy because even when we think about social media um and how people look at social media look at you know images on social media and envy other people um body types and like i said i, I follow a lot of people trainers that work out and i'm like man it just looks so great i just i just want to look like that you know what i mean is it would you tell your client hey let's not focus on what somebody else look like let's just try to get your journey and what you can achieve because we all i think a, a lot of us do it and look at other people and just be like oh god i wish i looked like that you know do you Absolutely. deal with that yeah but mm -hmm. you're only seeing a five second second video at the gym that you yeah. know that they probably took five seconds of one gym session they may not be at the gym every day it's just yeah. proposed to you through social media can be very persuasive mm -hmm. and so they're just opening up their closet uh very good posts like let's be real I'll tell you what real is. It's dragging yourself to the gym and throwing yourself <laughs> in there and on the treadmill and going yes. every minute and like clapping yourself for getting to 20 minutes. Yeah. You know, this, it's ugh. not easy. Mm -mm. And it, it, it looks a little ugly sometimes because we're not used to it. We don't want to be there, but we're, we're there. And once we leave there, the endorphins kick in. Mm hmm. But I think the fact of the matter is, let's be true, change isn't easy. And yeah. you have to overcome that by having focus desired on your goals and outcomes and knowing that this step is going to connect you to the next step and whatever goal that you're intended to be. Yeah, it, it, it's so right when you said drag yourself because I know it's like those days you get up and you just like, especially in the winter, it's like, oh God, I don't even want to do this. Or either I'm, I'm up early already, we're getting the kids on the bus and then I'm just like tired and then I'm like, well, should I just work out? And if I go back and lay down. So it's like, yeah, just having that motivation to pull yourself out of bed and put yourself in a place where, okay, let me, let me at least get the workout in. Because a lot of my mindset is like, let me at least get the workout in. I'll deal with the food later. Because that's one of the things I think I struggle with. It's like, I can get the workout in. It's the eating part that is giving me all my issues. It's being able to commit to an eating plan. Like, would you, do you recommend eating plans for your clients and said, Hey, get on, you know, maybe count calories or have some type of eating plan. Or do you think it's more just, you got to adapt to eating, eating a certain way in your lifestyle? That's a great question. So the way that I practice is I want to know what you like and dislike, and I want to know mm -hmm. your schedule. And then I work to help you learn how to create a meal and yeah. learn how to implement that every day, rather than giving you a piece of paper and telling you what to eat. Cause I'm not teaching you anything that way. Yeah. You're not, yeah. you know, you're, if I take that piece of paper away, what do you know? You know what I mean? So exactly, my, you know, I want to know. And if you have like, with my clients, okay, you have an event coming up this week or you're going to a wedding or mm -hmm. let's talk about how we're going to handle like what's going on there. What do you want to enjoy? Yeah, that's important. Yeah. And so I think, you know, 
you know, knowing, you know, and it's up to the client too. Like if they're, if they're really into, you know, tracking their food, then that, then we work with that. But if it's just getting someone to prepare a meal and follow and eat it that day or, or, you know, follow eating a healthy, healthy one day a week, that's where we start. Then we add a second day in, you Mm -hmm. know, so you, so it's very achievable. That mm-hmm. way you build confidence in the person and you build, it becomes a more of a routine and then you crave it once you're, you know, once you go away for a while and you're off your routine, you feel a little out of whack and then yeah. you come back and you know exactly what to do because it's a learned habit and you understand mm-hmm. why it works. Yeah. That's why I think, like you said, a balance is important um, when you're trying to get healthy and be healthy and get on a, a plan because it's the balance that you need. I, I have friends who will do certain types of diets where they'll just go, oh, I'm doing no carbs. Like they go cold turkey on everything. And I look at them, I'm like, you're going to want a carb sooner or later. I'm t- <laughs> like, I know, I mean, you've been eating carbs your entire life. You know, is it is it okay to go cold turkey on something? Or do you think you could still implement certain things into your eating habits? You just don't have to eat it like with every meal. Is it okay to say, hey, you can still have some things you enjoy? Or do you believe that um, you got to have some type of elimination process when it comes to changing your your eating habits? I guess it would be like the, what your eating habits are, right? Like yeah. If you're having pounds of sugar in your coffee or soda every day, we're going to start quickly removing that yeah. um, just, be for, just for to prevent pre-diabetes diabetes and that's an easy fix Mm -hmm. but going like what is the reason if there's not a health reason why you can't have something then everything should be worked in Mm -hmm. for your metabolism to work properly and eats fats proteins and carbs and um that's what gets you through the day and so you need the complex carbs to balance your blood sugar and that's super important and what people don't realize is that fruits and vegetables have carbs so Mm -hmm. you know and you don't want to eat all the protein you don't need it your body won't be able to process at all so um when you go like very um complete like 360 where you're just like no no fats or no carbs there's going to be a time where your body is going to lose to the fight and then you end up binging on that yeah so why are you putting a limit and restriction on the vital nutrients that you need yeah um based on someone's else's results so everyone's results is personalized to them so I think what you need to we do is like okay well we may have to decrease a little bit here right like maybe mm-hmm. you're only having half a cup instead of a whole cup mm-hmm. and work down um, and educating why you need to do that yeah. um, so I am not a person that believes in eliminating foods or different things it's like you know, we might have to be a very vigilant about our diet in the first month or two to get you the results that you need. But, um, you know, eventually maybe you're going to want to have a brownie. Okay. Yeah. We track it. We work our day around it and we move on. You're not just going to like throw your diet away because, or your car away because it has a flat tire. I know you're just yeah, going to it. Exactly. Yeah, you are. I think that's important for people to know that you do need to have carbs, proteins, and fats and stuff like that because, you know, some people feel like, well, I don't need to eat. I mean, I know people don't eat no carbs at all. You know what I mean? It's and so they sad. just kind of eat. I know, right? They just only eat like, you know, protein and veggies and stuff like that. And they really don't allow themselves to even touch it. And I'm just like, you know, I don't want to just do something that's just going to get a certain result. I want to do something that's going to be an actual lifestyle change that I can actually maintain. Because as you said, the maintenance is so hard to do. And I hear right. people say like when they do those liquid diets or a cabbage soup diet or whatever, it's like, you know what? You have to maintain what you did in order to maintain the weight off. And it's like, you gonna eat cabbage only for the rest of your life in order to keep this weight off? Is it, is it even healthy for you? Because like I said, some important, it's about your health. It's not just about, you know, just being small or skinny or looking a certain body type. It's about being overall healthy. Like I said, diabetes, high blood pressure, a lot of that stuff running my family, you know? And so it's like, it's about health to me versus looking a certain way. I want to be healthy. And it's so important with that. And I think it's important for people to know where they are because, you know, your health is your wealth. 
really that's what Absolutely. it is. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And so when you're not feeling healthy, it's going to affect all spectrums of your life. Mm-hmm. And I think when you start to restrict things, you start to create a stigma around that food mm-hmm. and you don't want to do that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, let's talk about, you know, when you talk about people feeling stuck, do you think when the job and career does that have a major toll on their um, overall health and weight loss journey? If they feel like, hey, I'm stuck at this job, I'm, I'm unhappy, I don't want to be here. Do you think that has a toll on it? Oh, I know it does. Yeah. Because you're looking, um, your cortisol level from stress is rising, which is mm-hmm. going to kind of add some water weight and belly bloating to you. And you're just going to be depleted with exhaustion because mm-hmm. you're fighting, you know, going to your job every day, which is going to possibly lead to over exercising to escape it or under exercising, or it could lead to overeating, under eating, you know, over indulgence in other areas as well. So that is a huge aspect. We spend most of our time at work. And if we're not feeling good about work or comfortable or being miserable, it carries into the weekend. It carries yeah. into your relationships. And it's really, I know, like, it's really, really heartbreaking. And it can uh, really ripple effect into your life. Yeah. So when that happens, it's like, okay, well, how, what, what is it that you don't like? Is there anything you can control about you know, being stuck or not liking your job or being burnt out? Is there anything, you know, maybe it's time to move on and look for something else, or maybe it's time to see what, how you can add value to your current position. So you're not burnt out and bored. Yeah. Yeah. It, it definitely is important. You know, today everyone is really on, people are thinking about, you know, their life in terms of like, I want to be happy. I want to be able to be free to do the things I want and um, experience the things that I want. And when you think about that mindset, you know, I think about it in terms of like, are people chasing happiness just because everyone said this is what you're supposed to do? Or are we chasing happiness? Are we really trying to be happy and joyful and change our mindset? Because it's such a trend now where everyone is, you know, using the word happy. And I think happiness is important to people. And the same thing when it comes to being more confident, especially women. And we think about our confidence in, um, in career, in our lives, in our relationships. You know, what are your thoughts on the trend of confidence and happiness? Is this something that people are just doing or is it something that people are really trying to achieve? I think we're in a place in society where it's okay for women to preach being confident. Mm-hmm. Like I think that we've gotten to a place where we're, you know, we're allowed to say that and, and talk about it, which is something that we haven't been able to. Yeah. So we do have a voice. Yeah. I think, mm-hmm. um, you know, going through COVID people really reflected oh, yeah. on their life and want to do stuff that make them happy. But some of that is from what they see on social media. Yeah. Um, you know, and oh, you could, you know, working from home and build your own company. Well, that's really hard, let me mm-hmm. tell you. <laughs> and you gotta have the resiliency to keep going and mm-hmm. have the support to do that. Mm-hmm. And you're gonna have ups and downs in life. And it's great for everyone to strive to be happy, but it has to come from a genuine place. Like, yeah. What, you know, what wasn't, why weren't you happy before? Like, that's what I would wanna know. Like, what, le- what, what was it working? Yeah. Um, you know, is it, did something occur that made you feel this way? You know, it's so funny speaking about working from home and I predominantly work from home now and I was in office and I felt like when I was in office, I was more dedicated to my eating habits. And I always thought that if I was to work from home, oh, I know I can do it then. You know what I mean? What is that about? I don't know if you, if you've seen this or if you had any clients to talk about this, that, Although you're working from home, it's much harder to eat right. Is it because I'm by the food all the time? Is that what it is? Because yeah. I'm like, oh my god, <laughs> so yeah. Difficult. Like you're in your home and it's comfortable to continue yes. to snack all day, and it's just like you go in the refrigerator and open it. Like that's all your food you can eat. It's not like you can see <laughs> the other people's lunches when you're working in the office. Exactly. I noticed that too. So I'm glad I asked that question. I was like, man, this is really hard being home and trying to be, even with working out, like when I was working and when I was going in office, oh, I get up, I'm 6 a.m. I'm up, kids are off. I'm up at, I'm like, I'm working out. Now it's like, oh, I'll get up at eight o'clock. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll figure it out when I get up. You know, it's like, I'm not prioritizing it like I used to. 
and I and that's when I goes back to because I was on a schedule. That's why I had to prioritize it. I had to be to work at a certain time, so I needed to get this done at this time. I need to have my lunch pack. I need to have snacks pack and whatever I need for throughout the day, so that I, so I don't feel like I'm starving. That's what's been happening. That's what I've noticed. I don't know if you had so, any clients that noticed that too. Yeah. So you just treat it like okay, you're doing the same thing. I mean, yeah. Maybe you don't have to do the food prep, or maybe you do mm-hmm. lunch prep and breakfast, but like treat it as you start your day in your office at this time. Yeah. And, you know, just because, but your office is is here. Yeah. Um. You know, in your home, so you can sleep a little bit later. You don't have a longer commute, but like, just treat it, you know, and reframe it as, okay, I'm in my, like I'm in my room, in my space and I'm going to work. Yeah. Yeah. So let's, what tips can you give um, someone in terms of like getting on the path of changing your mindset? Like what tips can you give? Yeah. It's a lot about reframing what you're thinking and what's causing these and, Mm -hmm. you know, how is it serving you? And, you know, are you hearing what you're supposed to be hearing or are you personalizing your story to it? Right. So Mm. detaching the, you know, detaching your story and your feelings and really write down what's going on. Yeah. You know, and then our, your feelings and then, what you're thinking or worrying about and then what is actually true and so sometimes that helps to reframe like okay everything i'm is just worry and fear and we don't need to work do that out of our control all we can do is try to be the best that we can be and so you know how could we be a little bit better each day so when we're working on our mindset you know we you know try to if we can't change our thoughts try to think of something you're grateful for because when you think of something you're grateful for or you know it creates abundance in your life and it automatically shifts the way that you're thinking because you're thinking about what you have yeah rather than what you don't and that's what a lot of times causes the negative mindset you're like, i don't have the money i don't have the house i don't yeah, have this that does mm-hmm. you know um i don't have enough time we all have everything it's just how we manage our thoughts about it so um you know kind of trying to find do that yeah you know, right what's going on and and how would the person you want to be show up so if you're mm-hmm. if you're trying to be a boss or move up the ladder or you know to be a ceo or whatever how would that ceo or that person that you want to be react to that situation yeah and have that mindset as someone that you know isn't going to be affected by drama or you know you know would it miss a workout because they were tired you know yeah. so you just kind of have to have that mindset as who do I want to be? Uh, you're, you know, I'm going to be healthy on the weekends. So what does that yeah. person do that's healthy on the weekends? Well, they call you call your friends and you go for a walk. Yeah, like, you know, you you know have yoga in your backyard. Mm-hmm. You're making some kind of healthy salad and sandwich that you found on TikTok to make. So like, yes, you know, you're doing stuff like that. Um, and that and that's where you're showing up. You're overcoming those thoughts by proving them that you that you can do that. Yeah. Instead of saying I can't, say I am. Let me ask you this question too. Um, why do you think it's so easy for us to just think negatively versus positive thinking? Because positive thinking is hard. That means that like we actually have to uh, like feel and, and know that we're happy, not have worry, not have fear. And yeah, and to actually believe things are be true. I think life circumstances, people always think someone's out to get them or something yeah. bad's going to happen. Um, and because we're, you know, a lot of people will grow up with parents that were always worried about money or where their food was going to come or mm-hmm. war, and rather just than just having like, okay, like today's a brand new day. Yeah, we focus so much on what didn't go right in our lives, and it comes every day. So just you know, by focusing on what right rather than what went wrong, mm-hmm. you're already changing your thoughts. Yeah, yeah, you're right because I think a lot of us just kind of start with a especially when um you set a goal for yourself you say okay i'm gonna get up i'm gonna work out i'm gonna eat healthy today and when you don't you really do beat yourself up a lot and i think you mentioned before in terms of like give yourself some compassion and some grace because i i know i I do this too i really get disappointed in myself when i don't do what i said i was gonna do and then that kind of makes you feel like what am i doing it all for you know so we really do beat ourselves up a lot when 
we don't achieve it. And so what do you, how do you attack that type of mindset when you just kind of beat yourself up when you don't achieve what you said you was going to do? What is that? It's not gonna, that's not going to achieve your result. You're just making mm-hmm. yourself digger in a hole. Yeah. Let me ask you this. Do you feel bad when you don't do the laundry? No, I don't. <laughs> so why do you feel bad if you missed a workout? I, you know, I don't know. I feel like it's the expectations I put on myself. I'm like, I'm expecting to do this. And I guess because it's connected to, I want to get this weight off of me and I need to be committed. And when I'm not committed to something, then I disappoint myself because I'm a person that's very committed to things. I'm very um, structured in certain ways. And when I don't do what I say I'm going to do, then I feel disappointed. And right. what I and- we have these expectations, they put limits on us. So those mm-hmm. limits mean if we don't meet them, then we fail. Yes. And that's not necessarily the case. Um, you know, I don't think that I failed if I have to readjust a deadline. Mm-hmm. I just had to that's do true. it because something else came up. So I think that, you know, you, you're committed if you're if you continue to do it after you might have had whatever you consider to be an upset in yeah. your line to a healthy life. Um, and then to reframe your thoughts on food, that there's no good or bad. It's a balance. And if you are unbalanced, just be more balanced at your next meal. Yeah. That's a good way to think about it. you waste too much time shaming yourself. Yeah. And I I think a lot of us do that. I think we, a lot of us just waste too much time being just down on ourselves about something that we just didn't accomplish, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. We do that a lot. And, um, So what do you think is one of the biggest things looking at your, you know, your history and coaching, um, mindset coaching, what is one of the biggest blockers for most people who are trying to be on that journey of change? Is it stress? Is it um, anxiety? You know, because I know you mentioned that too. Is it frustration with certain things in their lives? What do you think is one of those biggest blockers? I think it's like the feeling of being, of getting uncomfortable with newness. So change, um, I just wrote a recent blog about this. Change creates uncomfortable feelings and creates uneasiness. And you have to be okay with feeling that way. And I think change isn't the restriction or elimination of anything. It's just a different way to get to your your goal. Because the road, you know, if you think about it like a map, you're going the wrong way. So you're just turning around. Yeah. And you're trying a different highway. Yeah. And, you know, this might be a better one, a faster one. Yeah. So if you just kind of, you know, it is what it is, you know, you it's going to take you to the next step rather than being like, oh, I have to change everything. And I have to, you know, you have to be adaptable. Yeah. Adaptable, more positive, because I know I, have, I, know I got into this habit of oh, I don't want to do something that just feels like work. I want to do something where it just feels natural and I'm happy and it brings me joy. You know, this is why I even started back doing podcasting because I'm like, oh, this brings me joy in my life. So how important you think it is for people to have certain things that are joyful just for them in their lives that can really, because I think those comes with mindset changes too, because once you have joy and you go after something, you see yourself doing it, then you said, okay, if I can do this, then I can do something else you know what i mean i can achieve that so how do you think how important you think is joy and you need to have joy in your life so like maybe your job is just your investment into your joyful you know second habit or second job that's a really good way of looking at it like it's your it's your investment into your backyard garden Mm -hmm. and so when you rephrase it like that it does it it makes the you know going wherever you don't really want to do um better or you know i'm investing in my body because i want to stay healthy for my family and live longer or you know i want to be able to travel and walk and hike and not be you know out of breath yes and store on my vacation and so this this is what i have to do to be that person like i have to go out and practice yeah so it's really having a really good why behind it then yeah because if it's a should then it's a then it's a goal that you know then it should be on your grocery store list it has to be something that (laughs) makes you a little scared yeah you're right fear does pushes you to um to achieve great things we do know that (laughs) so yes it it, does it does it really do it pushes you to get achieve great things and being uncomfortable in places because i tell people in my job like if you're uncomfortable at the work it's time for you to go it's time for you to move 
to either to a different position or move from that company period because now you're not even you're not even comfortable being there anymore you're in an uncomfortable space so i definitely yeah. get that yeah so uh we're gonna we're gonna end the show soon i had a few i had another question that i wanted to ask you know because i always have to write down my notes when i'm done the shows because i have so many things that i want to say sometimes and i'm like oh i gotta write them down to make sure i remember that um being a positive thinker um do you consider yourself to be a positive thinker i aim to be a positive thinker every okay day. and that's why i wanted to know is it is it an achievable goal to say hey i I am a positive thinker. I've, I've seen people on social media. I've run into people who are, I feel like, man, they always think positively. Is you think that's something we can really achieve? Or is like, like you said, something you just work towards every day because you're going to have good and bad days. I think that if you work towards it every day, it becomes that you are one mm. and you're mo- and you're aligned. And then when you're having a day where you're not being positive, you're more woke to it. Yeah. You're more aware of it. And then you're like, okay, my, I, I'm not ha- showing up how I've been showing up. What happened? Yeah. Yeah. Well, this has been a really, really good interview, Kate. I've learned so much myself. You know, I feel like I have my only one-on-one coaching with you just now. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, I've gotten so many questions answered, so many things that I wanted to know when it comes to mindset change and changing my relationship with food. And I feel like my I myself will go back and re-listen to this episode too, just to make sure that I take down some notes um, on what we talked about. Um, before, you, before we end the show, I want to ask you a question that I normally ask my... Um, my guest on the show what advice what good advice uh, what advice stands out from for you that you receive from another woman that listen to your gut and your intuition because it's always right and so i really follow that and um that's super important and you know tomorrow is another day yes. you're capable of anything if you want it uh, so you know don't it's you know you can take a break but don't quit don't quit i love it Listen, and thank you, Kate. You're welcome. This and has been I, you know, awesome. I do want to offer your audience a free yes. complimentary session on my website. If they go, they can go ahead oh, and great. schedule one. Good, good. That is, listen, make sure you schedule it because I have learned so much today. And I'm just excited about taking a few steps in the right direction and changing my mindset and my relationship with food. Um, I'm Shani Sanders. This is the Girl Take No Podcast. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in and watching also on YouTube. Please, please, please make sure you contact Kate. She is a great life coach and mindset coach. As you have heard through this conversation, it is definitely something that is life changing. It's something that we all need to be on a better path. So thank you guys so much for listening and we will see you next time.